All right, here we go. Just listen to this action. We could just end the video right here. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. We're continuing on with Lockdown Knife Week and we got a few more blades to get through. Now today it has happened. Someone has posted the exact knife that we're taking a look at and it's kind of surprising to me because this knife has been discontinued for a little while now. Right here we have a photo coming from Ben's EDC and he says this knife is a lot bigger than it looks. This knife is definitely pretty large but I think it actually looks like a pretty big knife even from a distance. Maybe if there's nothing to reference it up against like having it in a hand or something like that it might look a little bit smaller but yeah it's definitely a big knife. So thank you for that submission. Again I'm pretty surprised that someone actually posted a photo of this knife because now they're basically like impossible to come by unless you find them secondhand on eBay. Occasionally some retailers might be able to get them in stock somehow, but they're probably old stock. Anyway, this is a knife that has been in my collection for a while now. I reference it all the time just because I like it so much. And we're taking a look at the ZT0804CF. The 0804CF is a Todd Rexford design that was brought to life by ZT. They built this thing to be a hard use knife, but it's also pretty classy, and I think you could actually put it into some tactical rolls as well. It has a blade length of 3.9 inches, a closed length of 4.9 inches, and an overall length of 8.9 inches. The blade is a drop point design, it is black DLC coated which is super tough and it keeps this thing pretty slick, and it's made out of a CTS 204P steel. This is the only knife in my collection made out of a 204P, probably one of the only ones that I've actually handled too. And from my experience, this blade is super tough, wear resistant, and even corrosion resistant as well. Now the CF in this name obviously comes from the carbon fiber handle scale, but if you flip it over to the reverse side, you'll notice that the opposite side is completely titanium. All the way down to the custom machined pocket clip, this thing is titanium and it also has a black DLC coating on it. The pocket clip can be set up for either left or right handed users, but it is tip up only, doesn't really bother me all that much. And then there's the flipper on the back which has some really nice jimping on it and the blade is actually running on KVT ball bearings. I literally can't get over how smooth the action of this knife is and we'll talk about that in detail in a second. One more thing to note up here by the pivot is that it is a frame lock design and there's a hardened steel insert in there to make lock up even stronger. And then on the show side of the knife you will see that this thing is stamped proudly made in the USA. Close up time with the ZT0804CF. Such a weird naming convention. ZT always has some like crazy names for their knives, but this is the only ZT I own and I remember it just because I love this knife so much. I've owned this one for quite a while. I picked it up at Cabela's, just like random impulse buy. I went in with a gift card. I think I had like $200 or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what I paid for this at the time, but I bought it full retail with my gift card. I didn't know much about it at the time. I just saw the carbon fiber and the all black everything and I was like, ooh, let me get that one out of the case. The dude put one in my hand and then I did this. And immediately I was like, okay, yeah, so I just bought a new knife. Even when this thing is brand new out of the box, like typically a knife would take a little while to break in, but this is just, oh, it's so good. Video doesn't do justice. Here, I'll do it behind the camera. It sounds so good. The lockup on here is great. Like I mentioned, it has that hardened steel insert right there, which is, I guess it's like adjustable. You could pull that out, I guess, if it wears out and whatnot. Over time, a frame lock like this is obviously going to wear in on the tang of the blade there. It'll sort of get pushed over a little bit too far. Right now, we're at a pretty good lockup. It's about 50%. I don't need a knife like this to have a super crazy early lockup. It's still a production knife. Well, I should say it was a production knife. And yeah, this thing jumped out to me right away. I love everything about it. Now this is a fairly large knife. We're gonna do some comparisons here, but it fills the hand so well. There's no jimping or anything on the back of the knife, but with the flipper right here, it sort of creates that like finger choil and it just feels locked into your hand. You can have a thumb forward grip if you're doing fine work with it. I actually did carry this knife as an EDC blade for a while and the DLC coating on the blade has been holding up really well. Like I mentioned, this 204P steel, it's pretty damn tough. I've had no issues with it. I haven't really beat on this thing and I don't plan on doing that because, well, you can't get them anymore. 
You can check the action on the clothes. There's a detent right here where it stops. So if you push past that, you basically just let gravity do the work. Give it a little shake. Just closes so smooth. That is of course thanks to the ball bearing system in here like I mentioned, which I'm not gonna be able to get a good shot of here on video, but it is a very, very nice feeling. Even when you sort of like limp wrist this thing, if you're like not giving it full force on the flip, it still wants to open. Or if you do it properly, it's just super fast, even for a big blade. It is like a semi flow through design. It has a custom backspacer right here with a little notch in it. So that's nice because you're not gonna get anything stuck between the carbon fiber and the titanium. Got a little lanyard hole down here. Don't care about them because I don't use them. And then of course right here, they were USA made and I'm sure they were proud of that. Centering on here is still almost perfection after all this time. So what can we compare this thing to? Like I mentioned, it's a pretty large knife. Here's one that I reviewed a little while ago, the ProTech SNG Operator, all black, sterile blade, love this. I kinda wish this thing was actually sterile without all the markings on it, cause it would be even cooler, like this thing. This one has a tritium insert in the push button there, it fires great, gotta love ProTech. So this one is coming in just a little bit smaller than the ZT, kind of a weird handle shape when compared to something a little bit more straight like this. I love the profile of this thing, and the profile of a Strider like this took a little while to grow on me, but I'm super happy to have this thing in my collection as well. Another one that we took a look at last week, we have the Benchmade Freak right here. It's coming in just a little bit smaller. I kept mentioning that this is a pretty large knife. The ergos on this one are really good. Haven't carried this one a whole lot, but it's still coming in a little bit smaller than this, and I used to carry this, so I guess I should have no problem with the Benchmade. Now the knife that I have that's probably closest to the size is this wicked thing right here. I don't show this knife very often, but it's a Browse Blades Echelon. Weird flipper on this one, it's like way on top of the knife. <laughs> Crazy blade, I don't know why I don't really show this thing anymore, but yeah, it's just a wicked design. I'll move this one over, put this right next to here, and there you can see that's probably about the same, 8.9 inches, something like that. You can sort of see a theme here with lots of black minus the red in that. And then of course we have one that sort of towers over the rest, right here the CRKT Seismic with that deadbolt system. Video on this one was on the channel a little while ago, and this thing is just a huge knife, much larger than any of these. So that's pretty much it. I don't want to rant and rave about this thing too much because people are probably going to be mad that I'm even making a video on it because you can't buy them anymore. But I do want to show it off because it is in my collection. If you have one of these, hold on to it. Such a good knife, highly recommend it. If you ever have the chance to buy one, even secondhand, do it. It's one of my favorite knives. And I hope ZT brings something like this back sometime in the future. So that is all that I had for the ZT0804CF. ZT, if you're watching this, bring this back please. I'm always checking out new knife designs whenever they release and there hasn't been one that caught my attention like this has. So I'm super stoked that I picked it up when I did and I'm happy to have it in my collection and it will probably be here forever. If you guys have any questions on it, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you are new here, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week. New videos every day this week for Lockdown Knife Week. Use that hashtag. And that's all that I had for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.